Hello, welcome back to Animated Literacy. This is lesson number 54 from the Story, Song, and Action book. In our last lesson, we drew some pictures that had Woody Woodchuck's uh sound in them. So we drew a picture of a cookbook. So there's two words with his sound. Then we drew a picture of a good cook and with a foot. So we had three more words with Woody Woodchuck's sound. Then we drew a picture of a cookie truck and it had a hood and it had cookies on the side and it had a flat roof. So there's some more words with his sound. Then we came down and we drew a picture of a hook and the hook is attached to some wood with Woody Woodchuck sound. And then after the lesson, I went back and added another picture on my own of a lamb because a lamb has wool that has Woody sound and a hoof that has Woody sound. Then I drew an arrow to each of those nouns to find words to describe them. And some of the words like flat and good I put on my own, but other ones I wanted to find some more interesting words to do. So I went to our book Dog that we read together and looked at the chart of all the adjectives that I found in, in that book. And some of the adjectives that I used is I found the word smooth in the book dog and so I labeled my wood with smooth and I found the word fluffy and labeled the wool on the sheep with the word fluffy and I also found the word shaggy and I labeled my lamb as a shaggy lamb. So it's always fun to see how many words that you can find from books that you might not have thought of to use to describe. Then at the end of our last lesson we wrote the song, If You Miss Me, and it sang like this. If you miss me and you're looking around and you can't find me anywhere, just come into my bedroom. I'll be reading books there. And so I drew a picture of me reading a book in a bed and I labeled it my bedroom. And then I wrote a sentence about it. This is me reading in bed. And then I drew something else that's in my bedroom. I have a nightstand next to my bed and on my nightstand I have a lamp. And so you can do lots of labeling that. You can also, any of the songs that we do, you can use them to help with your reading by making a hide and seek out of it. So um, your teacher or your parent can name some words and then you can find the words, point to them, make the sounds in the word, and then tell how the words are spelled. So let's just do a couple of those. If I asked you to find the word miss, you could put your finger on the word right here. What are the sounds in miss? Miss. And what are the letters we use to spell it? M-I-S-S. -S. Find the word just. Now if I look over here, there's the word just. What are the sounds in just? J just. And what are the letters to spell just? J-U-S-T. And there's a lot of words in this one that are fun to use for hide and seek words. This is a favorite poster of mine, and it says, don't be afraid to use big words with little kids. If they can say Tyrannosaurus Rex, they can say anything. And we're going to use some really big words in our lesson today. The character that we're going to be learning is Ichabod Ichthyosaurus. Now, when you come to a really big word like that, the easiest way to learn how to say the word is to kind of make it musical. And so if we just say ichthyosaurus, that's kind of hard to say back. But if I say it this way, say just part of it to me, ichthy, can you say that? Ichthy, now say asaurus, say that back, asaurus. Now let's put it together, ichthyosaurus, ichthyosaurus. Now let's count how many syllables are in that word, ready? Ichthyosaurus. So we had to come all the way back to our head. So how many is that? One, two, three, four, five. Now it turns out when I first learned the word ichthyosaurus, I thought that an ichthyosaurus must be a dinosaur because the word sounds like brontosaurus, stegosaurus, ichthyosaurus. So I thought all those words that sound like that would be dinosaur names. 
But it turns out that an ichthyosaurus is more of a lizard than it is a dinosaur. And so I read some books and did some studying on ichthyosauruses, and here's what I discovered. An ichthyosaurus is an ichthyosaur. And ichthyosaurs first were in um, existence about 250 million years ago, actually a few million years before there were any dinosaurs. Some ichthyosauruses, ichthyosaurs, not ichthyosaurus, some ichthyosaurs were so big they were 85 feet long. That would be like if you took real cars, put them end to end, it would take about five or six cars to measure the size of an ichthyosaurus. So that was a, or an ichthyosaur. That was a really big animal. And there were many kinds of ichthyosaurs. And here, here's a book about ichthyosaurs. Here's an ichthyosaurus. And an ichthyosaurus was one of the smaller of the ichthyosaurs. It was only a little over six feet in length if you were to measure it from the tip of its tail to the tip of its nose. The first person that discovered the ichthyosaurus was this lady. And they wrote a tongue twister about her. We learned a tongue twister for Woody Woodchuck that went, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Well, you might have heard this tongue twister. She sells seashells by the seashore. And this lady was named Mary Anning. And Mary Anning's father liked going to the seashore and digging out shells. And so he taught Mary how to do that. Then um, he slipped on a rock, got injured, and ended up dying when she was only about 11 years old. So she had to raise money for the family. And the way she raised money to help her family have food to eat and a place to live was by digging out these fossils. And here she is holding one of the fossils that she dug out of the cliffs and then she would sell them. So she really didn't sell seashells, she sold fossils. And here are some of the fossils of ichthyosaurs that lived millions of years ago. And so these are ones that are embedded in rock and they would carve out the rock from around it so they wouldn't damage the fossil. And they would be in museums or people would buy them and put them in their, in their homes. So that's what a real ichthyosaur looked like. So one of our topics is going to be ichthyosaurs and ichthyosauruses. Another topic is going to be things that you can find under the sea. And here's a couple Skybrary books that you can read that talk about what it would be like going down under the sea and what kinds of things you might find. This one is called Sea Life, and this is, is called Octopus and Me. So you can kind of take a trip under the ocean. This is a fun one because it's made out of an old song. This is a song that was originally Over in the Meadow, but instead of Over in the Meadow, they sing it as Over in the Ocean, and it sings like this. Over in the ocean, far away from the sun, lived a mother octopus and her octopus one. Squirt, said the mother, I squirt, said the one. So they squirted in the reef far away from the sun. Well, I didn't sing that terribly well. But if you have this book, you can have fun practicing singing it and sing it a lot better than I just did. Another topic that we're going to be talking about today is itching. And I told you that an ichthyosaurus lived um, before dinosaurs, but they were still around when the dinosaurs came. So they spent a lot, millions of years where there were both ichthyosauruses and ichthyosaurs in the ocean and dinosaurs all at the same time. And some dinosaurs lived in the ocean. Now, itching is one of the things we're going to be talking about. And these are ton, two fun books about dinosaurs with itches. And one is called the Itchy Book, and one is called the Ichiosaurus. This one is fun, and it's called Itchy Itchy Chicken Pox. And another one is just called Itch. And I have Itchy Itchy Chicken Pox here, and we'll just read a little of it. And it goes like this. A spot, a spot. Uh-oh, chicken pox. 
under my shirt, under my socks, itchy, itchy chicken pox. So I bet there's been times when you've had itches that you tried to get rid of. Another topic we're going to talk about are inchworms. And these are little inchworms that can measure things. And this is a book called Inchworm and a Half. And I'll just read a little bit of that so you get an idea how that book goes. The inchworm who lives in the garden can climb any surface with ease. She nibbles and measures all of her treasures, zucchini, eggplants, and snow peas. So it's got a lot of nice rhymes in it. And here's the inchworm up here measuring. Her measuring method is simple. Each loop that she takes is one inch. She starts at one end and the results will depend on the number of loops. That's a cinch. And so they just keep looping up and down like this and measuring inch by inch. And here's another book about inchworms that's called Inch by Inch. And it reads like this. Here's a picture of the inchworm and here's a bird that wants to eat the inchworm. So do you think she's going to eat it? Let's find out. One day a hungry robin saw an inchworm, green as an emerald, sitting on a twig. He was about to gobble him up. Don't eat me. I am an inchworm. I am useful. I measure things. Is that so? said the robin. Then measure my tail. How long do you think the robin's tail is? That's easy, said the inchworm. One, two, three, four, five inches. And then he goes on to measure other things in that book. Well, in our story today, we're going to be learning about Ichabod Ichthyosaurus. So let's say that. Say this back to me. Ichabod. Ichabod. Ichthyosaurus. Ichthyosaurus. And here's Ichabod swimming in the ocean. Now, most people thought that ichthyosauruses had become extinct and there weren't any of them left in the world. But poor Ichabod was still around and he got left all by himself. And all of his relatives had turned into fossils. And so here's Ichabod swimming up over the top of the fossils. Iggy was a diver and he loved going down under the water and looking for all the different animals. So you can imagine how excited he was when he ended up finding an ichthyosaurus. Now you can see the ichthyosaurus really looks a lot like a dolphin that we still have today, but they're not related to dolphins. What are they related to? To lizards. Okay, so he saw that Ichabod was really thin and needed to eat. So he started feeding him insects and inchworms. So he wanted other people to be able to enjoy seeing the ichthyosaurus. So he built an underwater inn with round windows so that people could look out the window and watch Ichabod without bothering Ichabod. Well, one day an inchworm was inching his way along and measuring Ichabod when it inched into Ichabod's mouth. And as it inched into his mouth and started to go down his throat, it caused Ichabod to start to itch furiously. And as he itched, he put his back right up against the underwater inn and the inn began to shake and the people inside got really scared. Well, as soon as Iggy noticed what was happening with Ichabod, he quickly swam up to Ichabod's mouth, reached in, pulled out the inchworm so that Ichabod could stop itching before he had destroyed the underwater inn. So now Ichabod is, doesn't eat inchworms. Instead, he keeps the inchworms on the outside where they can measure him. And Iggy is really careful not to cause Ichabod to itch. And all the people in Iggy's underwater inn can look out the windows and watch as Iggy takes a ride on Ichabod. So whenever you see Ichabod Ichthyosaurus, I want you to think about how he itched. Take one hand and reach across to your opposite shoulder, 
then take the other hand and reach across and go, eh. Now I used to itch like this. Then I read about some scientists who talked about the brain and they talked about that this side of the brain needs to talk to or communicate with this side of the brain. And the best way to help the brain talk to the two different sides is by crossing this arm over this center line. So this hand goes to this side of the body, this hand goes to this side of the body, or you can cross your legs the same way. And whenever you do that, it helps the two sides of your brain to talk to one another a little bit better. So when you're doing the gestures for animated literacy, you might think to yourself, how could I do this by crossing the center line? And it might make you a little bit smarter by getting your brain's two sides to talk to each other. So when we itch, we're gonna do this and we're going to go, eh, say this after me, eh, kabod, eh, kabod, itch, itch, eh. So that's Ichabod sound. And here's our picture of Ichabod ichthyosaurus. So let's find out if Ichabod sound is a consonant or a vowel. So let's put him into, are you sleeping with our bells? Ready? Are you itching? Are you itching? Ichabod ichthyosaurus. Ichabod ichthyosaurus. Ichabod's bells are saying, Ichabod's bells are saying, I, 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 I. Did we use ing and on? Nope. So what kind of sound is that? Vowel sound, because Ichabod is like the cheese in the farmer in the dell. His sound can stand alone. So now let's learn Ichabod's song, okay? And it starts like this. Show me itching again. Ichabod has itchy insides. Can you sing that? Ichabod has itchy insides. And this song, if you know the old song, I've been working on the railroad, that's the melody for this song. So let's do that again. Ichabod has itchy insides. Ichabod has itchy insides. And you can point inside your mouth. Now you can make a little inchworm like this and he's going up and measuring and moving along. Inchworms made them itch. Itchworms made them itch. Now show me itching again. Ichabod has itchy insides. Ichabod has itchy insides. Show me your inchworm again. Because inchworms inched in him. Because inchworms inched in him. Now we need to make our letter I. So you can make either a capital I, and I can do that one just by sticking my hand up like this, or any way you want to make it. Or I can make a little I with a line and use my fist for a dot up on top. So let's sing that. I is for his itchy insides. I is for his itchy insides. I is for Ichabod's itch. I is for Ichabod's itch. I is for Ichthyosaurus. And here he's swimming in the ocean. I is for Ichthyosaurus. With itchy insides. With itchy insides. Okay, let's try that once more. Ready? Ichabod has itchy insides. Ichabod has itchy insides. Inchworms made them itch. Inchworms made them itch. Ichabod has itchy insides. Ichabod has itchy insides. Because inchworms inched in him. I is for his itchy insides. I is for his itchy insides. I is for Ichabod's itch. I is for Ichabod's itch. I is for Ichthyosaurus. I is for Ichthyosaurus. With itchy insides with itchy insides. Okay, let's try that along with our recording now and I'll point to the words and you sing along and do the gestures. Ready? Bye. 
not as itchy insides. Inchworms made them itch. Big on his itchy insides because inchworms inched in him. I is for his itchy insides. I is for Ichabod's itch. I is for Ichthyosaurus with itchy insides. Okay, so now when you get your picture of Ichabod Ichthyosaurus, you can do your rainbow writing over the letter I, and then turn your page over on the back, and think about the things that were in Ichabod's story, and if any of them remind you of experiences that you've had. Um, first of all, you might think about dinosaurs, and I know a lot of kids like dinosaurs. So you could write a story, or you could write a sentence, or draw pictures, about things that you know about dinosaurs. Another topic that we talked about was itching. And if you've ever had a horrible itch, what part of your body was it that was itching? And were you told, don't scratch it? Did your mom put some lotion or something on it to help it to stop from scratching? Um, so you can write about having an itch. We also learned about underwater and things that you would find underwater. So have you ever gone down underneath the water, maybe in a lake or maybe in the ocean or in the sea? And what kinds of things did you see or what kind of things would you like to see down in the ocean? Iggy had an underwater inn and an inn is like a hotel or a motel that you stay at when you're traveling. So you might write about a time when you might have traveled with, with your parents or with somebody, and maybe you stayed in a motel and what that experience is, was, was like. And then either write your sentence or get help from your teacher or parent and rainbow write over the top of what they write on your paper so that you can learn to write about Ichabod. So I hope you enjoyed that story today. And I will look forward to seeing you in our next lesson where we're going to draw some things and label things that have Ichabod's sound. So I hope to see you then.